Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry emphasizing God's unconditional love and grace. Today, Andrew explains how to trust in God regardless of the circumstances. Now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I've been teaching a series that I've entitled, In God We Trust, and it's really a reaction or a comment on the current financial crisis that the world is talking about, all of the monetary problems. And, you know, normally I just don't veer from just teaching straight on, straight on Scripture to getting off into some current events, but... There has been so much fear and so much unbelief and panic spoken even among Christians over this that I just thought that this was begging for me to make a comment on it. I really feel impressed with the Lord to do this. So I've got this new series. It's a two-part series entitled, In God We Trust. The first part is entitled, The Sky Is Not Falling. And today is going to be my last day to minister on that. I've just been trying to put this into perspective. I've given a lot of comments and statistics on uh, things that show that this isn't the first crisis. It's not the last crisis. We are going to get through this. We have been having things intentionally distorted and overstated to, because bad news sells. It gains people's attention. It gets ratings. And the sad fact is that most people don't let the Lord speak to them. They don't let the Word of God get in the way much of what they feel. They are just plugged into this world, and if the world panics, they panic with it. And you know what? I, that just really uh, irritates me. I don't know how else to say it. It irritates me the way that Christians are so influenced by this world system. Now, I know that, uh, you know, here I am. I'm in this world, too, and I'm sure that I'm influenced by it more than probably what I should be. But I'm saying that, man, I just, God has changed my life around, my whole joy, my peace, my outlook, my hope, my future, my confidence, my expectations. Everything in my life is based on God, and He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. So therefore, my hope doesn't change. I don't operate in fear, and I really don't care that much what's going on in the world. I care in the sense that I want to see people's lives touched, and so I do stay abreast of some things, but I guarantee you, if this world system goes to pot, I am still going to have joy and peace in the Lord. Amen. And I know that there are some of you that are thinking, well, you just can't live that way. Well, don't wake me up, because that's the way I'm living. And so I've been trying to just make this point that, and there's a lot of Christians that don't even they don't even think about this. There's a lot of Christians that think, but it's a terrible situation and we ought to be bothered. Matter of fact, I saw a bumper sticker one time that said something like, if you aren't depressed, uh, I forgot the exact wording of it, but it's something like, you aren't very smart or you aren't paying attention or something like that. And I admit that in the world system, there's lots of bad things going on. There's lots of things that I could be upset about. But my faith is not in this world. Paul lived in a much worse political climate, a much worse economical climate. He didn't have the technological advantages. He didn't have the conveniences that we have. I, I mean, there is just... There is no comparison. We are infinitely better off, and yet the Apostle Paul was able to say he just had a light affliction. All of the things that happened to him, being shipwrecked and persecuted and stoned, left for dead and put in prison and on and on, it's just a light affliction. Not because it was light, but because of the way he processed it. And he said that he realized it was just for a moment. He put it into the light of eternity. And he also wasn't looking just with physical eyes at the natural things that you could see. He was looking at spiritual eyes, with spiritual eyes. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. And that's what I'm doing. And I believe that Christians should be doing this. Yes, we are in this world. Yes, we have to deal with it. Yes, you need to make some plans for the future. You need to take the money that you've got, and you need to use it wisely and invest. But I'm telling you what, you shouldn't have your confidence and your trust in this world system. And if you have been fearful, if you've been depressed, discouraged, if you've had any of these reactions, if your hope is gone, if you haven't been able to sleep at night, 
And I'm saying this in love, not to condemn, but I'm saying you have been trusting in this world system more than you should. The only ones or the only thing that will ever let you down are the ones that you lean on. You should be leaning on the everlasting arms. You should be le leaning on Jesus and not leaning to your own understanding. Let me just take a few scriptures here. Psalms chapter 27, verse 1. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came unto me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. The Lord is my light, so I'm not going to be afraid. Now, I know that there's some people watching this program thinking, well, that doesn't apply to finances. That doesn't apply to investments. That doesn't apply to my 401K. That doesn't apply to my retirement account. That, that's talking about spiritual things over here. You know, I haven't got time to give you a testimony, but one of the greatest experiences that I ever had happened through me singing this scripture. Jamie and I were given an eviction notice right after we had been married. We'd only been married a couple of months. And I made mistakes. I didn't understand. I thought if you were a minister, you couldn't work a secular job. I thought you were backsliding on God if you didn't uh, just trust God full time for your finances. And that was wrong. I didn't understand it at the time. Because of it, I gave away all the money that I'd saved before our marriage. We were broke. We got an eviction notice. We went to a service that night. And... On the way there, I mean, Jamie and I were just about to lose our joy, just about to lose our faith. Here we were, a newly married couple about to kick, get kicked out of our apartment. It looked like we had failed. But you know what? I took these exact scriptures, and I began to sing this. Jamie and I sang it all the way to the meeting. And it's a long story. I won't go into detail. But God miraculously turned that around. Three o'clock the next morning, God met my needs supernaturally. And so I'm saying that this doesn't just apply to spiritual things. This will work in the area of finances. You can say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Shall I fear the stock market? Shall I fear the people that are in control of the monetary systems? Shall I fear all of the chicken littles that are saying that the sky is falling and that everything is falling apart? Or am I going to fear God? You can trust God. Look at this in Psalms chapter 46, verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Now look at this. He's saying we aren't going to fear. And he says, I'm not going to fear even if the earth is removed. What a statement. You know what? Again, I am not trying to say that there isn't any problem. I'm not trying to say that some people aren't in a crunch. But I am saying that the problems we are experiencing, the financial problems that are causing people to panic and operate in so much unbelief and fear, I think that most of you would have to agree that this problem isn't near as bad as if the earth was to be exploded and incinerated and the earth no longer existed. To me, that would be a little bit worse than the crisis we're going through. And he says, I'm not going to fear though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Just think about what that would do. People talk about global warming in the sea rising one inch or something. What would happen if every mountain in this world was cast into the sea? Just think of the tidal waves, the tsunamis that that would cause. Think of how that would raise the oceans. Think of the cities, the coastal areas that would be destroyed through that. Matter of fact, if the mountains were gone, it's possible the whole world would be inundated with water if you were to put all the mountains into the sea. And yet he says, I'm not going to fear even if that happens. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. If David could say that he was... Or, if he could say that he was not going to fear even if the earth was removed, if the mountains were cast into the sea, and if he had that much trust and faith in God, well, then I guarantee you this little puny, insignificant problem in comparison. Now, I know some of you are going to take offense because you think I'm making light of a situation. I'm saying in comparison, this is nothing. 
You know, I'm reminded of a scripture. I can't really think of the verse or the reference right now, but the Lord was speaking to his people, and he says, if the footmen have wearied you, how are you ever going to contend with the horsemen? In other words, if this little problem is bothering you, well, then how would you ever deal with the earth being removed, the mountains being cast into the sea? I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the fact that so many Christians have gotten bummed out, discouraged, fearful, have been speaking unbelief, they've lost their hope, they haven't been able to sleep at night, is a tre tremendous indictment against our lack of trust in the Lord. There shouldn't be any, any, any difference in your life because of the financial situation. And I know some of you are just incensed and yelling at the television set while well, I'm yelling back at you and saying this is true. The Word of God will work in every situation. Somebody says, but I've lost all of my savings or whatever. Well, you've learned the lesson. And you know what? If your trust is in the Lord, whatever you've lost, God can give it back to you. And now you should have enough uh, wisdom that you aren't going to use unsafe investment practices again. And you can profit from this. And it could be a learning curve. You are better off for it. Thank you for that thunderous silence. Man, let me just skip through it. There's so many scriptures here. I haven't got time to do all of this, but I want to point out some of these scriptures. Look in Proverbs chapter 3. In verse 21, he says, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Talking about the word of God. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. You know, there's some people that have stumbled because of the financial crisis, because they weren't basing their life on the Word. They weren't following uh, solid, firm, biblical instructions in the way they handled their money. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Now, this is a person whose trust is in the Lord. Let me ask you, have you not been able to sleep because of the financial situation? Has it kept you awake at night? If it has, I'm not mad at you. I'm not upset. I'm just trying to get this across that, you know what? You aren't trusting God in this area of finances. You are looking to the world system. And when the world system hiccups, when it has a downturn, well, then you uh, react to it and get under all of this fear and under all this stuff. And it shouldn't be. You ought to be able to lie down and your sleep will be sweet. You shall not be afraid of sudden fear neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes. The Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Now, in contrast to this, look at this in Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Now, this is Solomon writing, and Solomon was the richest man. The Lord said that there was never a man before him, nor will there ever arise a person after him with so much wealth. So you look at whoever today. You look at the richest person in the world today, and Solomon was richer. He had more money, and yet look at what he said here. It's, uh, the writer is describing the prosperity and the setting and all of the things that went on with Solomon. And it says in uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 7, Behold his bed, which is Solomon's. Three score valiant men are about it of the valiant of Israel. They all hold swords being expert in war. Every man hath his sword upon his thigh because of fear in the night. Now, here's the richest man on the face of the earth. He, his 401k was perfect. Amen. He had a retirement that he never had to worry about money. Money was a no object to him. And yet, he had to have 60 men surrounding his bed at night with their swords drawn because there was so much fear of people trying to kill him. In contrast to that, his father, David, there isn't any report that anybody stood around his bed at night. Now, of course, David had a palace, and I'm sure that there were guards, and I'm sure that there were some things, but David didn't live in the fear that Solomon lived in. And there's so many points I could make out of this. But you know what? If your trust is in riches, if your trust is in the physical, natural things, then you know what? You're never going to have peace because it's always going to be subject to something happening to it. You know what? I, again, I don't have a lot of money. I've got some money, but I, I don't 
My trust isn't in that. If I lost everything I've got, you know what? I'd still be happy. I'd still be trusting the Lord, and I'd get it all back because God is my source. The person where that prosperity came from, I still have him. I'm still walking with him, and if I lost everything I had, I'd get it all back. Some of you doubt that and say, sure. It's easy for you to say. Well, you know, in 2002, we had fires here in Colorado, and the fires came within one mile of my house, and they had a mandatory evacuation, and they made us leave. And we got our pictures, and we got our uh, documents that couldn't be replaced. We thought about loading up all of our house in a rental truck and moving it, but we just decided to believe God. And, and uh, as we were leaving, we prayed over our house, believed it was going to be there, and it was. We escaped the fire. But as we were leaving, Jamie said this, and I agreed 100%. She said, you know, this is just stuff. It's not important. It's our relationship with God that's important. And we've had fun getting this stuff. If, if it burns, if we lost everything we've got, we'll get it all back, and I'll have fun getting it back. So you can't tell me that this is just something I can say. I've lived it. I've actually come to a place to where I've been in situations, and you know what? I can truthfully say that it doesn't matter what people do. I am going to prosper. My hope is in the Lord, and if your faith has been shaken, that just shows you that it was in something besides God. I'm not saying that to hurt, but I'm saying it to help so that we can realign our faith. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Man, those are strong scriptures. I know some of you may have lost money in the stock market. You may be panicking. You may be thinking about what's going to happen. But remember where you were before God gave you that money. There was a time that most of you had nothing, and because of your faith in God and trust in God, God prospered you. And maybe if you've lost some of your assets, well, then I'm not saying that you just sit there and rejoice because of it, but it shouldn't devastate you. God's the one that gave you those things in the first place. God is your strength. Don't be dismayed. He's going to strengthen us. In verse 11, it says, Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. They that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and thou shalt not find them. Even them that contend with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Man, I like that. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. In other words, you know, you may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer. You may feel like, well, that's easy for you to say, Andrew, because you can do this and you've already been serving the Lord. And, you know, we just put people in different categories and say, well, that'll work for you, but it won't work for me. The Lord says, fear not, thou worm Jacob. Jacob hadn't had the best history with the Lord. They had disbelieved him. They had rebelled at him. They'd gone into idolatry. They had done everything wrong. They had made mistake after mistake after mistake, and yet here's the Lord saying, I'm with you. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 43, 1, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with thee. Do, are any of you feeling like you've been going through some deep waters, troubled waters, that there's a storm in your life, that you've been having problems? He says, I'll be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You know, if you were to take these scriptures and operate in faith, you may be going through a fire. I really believe that probably the majority of people watching me have not had a significant downturn in your finances. You know, personally, I don't know any person personally who has had a downturn in their finances. Now, I know one person that had a lot of money invested in the stock market and it lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, but you know, if he'll just stay the course, that'll come back. He'll eventually get that back. But outside of that one person, I honestly don't know any person that has lost their job, that everything is crashing down around them. Now, I know that there are some that are that way, but it's not the majority. But even if you are going through that, this says that the flame is not going to kindle upon you. 
that you are not going to be burned. God has promised you that if you will turn to Him, God will bring you through this thing, and He will restore unto you the things that Satan has stolen from you, and you will be wiser because of it. There's just no reason to panic in this situation. And you know, for time's sake, I'm going to have to jump on down. Man, I'm missing so many scriptures, but let me share this with you. Isaiah chapter 51, and in verse 7, it says, Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of man, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. Verse 12, I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall which shall be made as grass. And forgettest the Lord thy maker that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and hath feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Boy, this is a powerful scripture. The Lord is saying, I'm the one that comforts you. Why are you afraid of people? Why are you afraid of these things? And look at this in chapter 51, verse 13. And you forget the Lord your maker. You know, let me say this in love. I don't want to diminish the seriousness of what I'm about to say, but I don't want you to be offended and think I'm against you. I'm saying this out of love. But brothers and sisters, people who have panicked, people who aren't able to sleep at night, people who are, have lost their hope, that are now discouraged and dismayed about the future, that are worried about where is this going, everything is out of control. Can I say this with love and respect? But you know what? You have forgotten God. You have forgotten that God is the one who gave you whatever it is that you lost in the first place. You have forgotten that God is our source, not this world. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says that the Lord supplies all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It is not based on this world's economy. You know, our ministry here operates differently than most ministries. Most ministries will talk about that during the summer there's this downturn, and so they just plan on that. You know what? I believe, God, that I am prospered and blessed all of the time. And somehow or another, I understand the logic behind people going on vacation and using their money for vacations, uh, their money that they would have given to the Lord for their vacation. I understand the logic of it, but somehow God circumvents all of that, and we go ahead and prosper even in the summer. I understand that when crisis happens, most people's, uh, most ministers' income goes in the toilet, but mine doesn't. I understand that other people have had problems, and I'm not criticizing them, but I'm saying God is my source. God supplies my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, and praise God, we are going to prosper. I don't care what this world does. That's my confession. That's what I'm believing, and I'm not backing off of it. And I welcome you to join me in my faith. I'm welcoming you to start trusting in God Recognize the sky isn't falling. This isn't the end of the world. Quit listening to the chicken littles out there that are just saying things for ratings and to get your money. I tell you, this could help you. I encourage you to listen as our announcer gives you some information. Remember, today's my last day to offer this first teaching in this series entitled, In God We Trust. Andrew's teaching titled, In God We Trust, is available in a two-part CD album or it's available in a DVD album made from Andrew's daily TV broadcast. Each is available for seven pounds. Request CD album T1059C or DVD album T1059D when you contact the ministry. The first teaching in the audio CD album titled The Sky Is Not Falling is also available for three pounds. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this first CD free of charge. Request teaching number TO21C when you write or call and we'll be pleased to send it to you. You can reach us through our website at awme.net. On our website, you'll not only find materials from today's broadcast, you'll find a wealth of resources free for you to download for yourself and share with others. Again, that web address is awme.net. Or you can use your credit card to order by telephone. 
Our helpline number is 01922 473 300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44 1922 473 300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. If you prefer to write to us, our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. We hope to hear from you today. Karis Bible College is housed in the Andrew Womack Ministries building. The school and ministry share the same vision, to change the way the body of Christ relates to God. People from all walks of life are attracted to the school for its powerful application of the Word of God and for the opportunity to participate in one of the most life-changing ministries in the world. The TV program was great, but I just knew that I wanted to be in the Word 24 hours a day, seven days a week. CBC instructors are accessible to the student body and committed to Andrew's methods for discipling tomorrow's leaders. That means classroom instruction and practical application always go hand in hand. God is more concerned about using you than you are about God using you. Regular daytime CBC classes are saturated with the Word of God. No one attends without seeing the Word produce radical changes in their lives. And it's not just the four hours a day in school but it's outside of the classroom too. And when we get to rehearse that and go over the things that we've been learning in class and different revelation that somebody's got, and it's just, I mean, it's almost 24 hours a day of, of being in the Word. In this atmosphere of faith, lifelong friendships are formed that encourage and strengthen students long after graduation. 98% of these people here have done the same thing I've done for the same reasons you know, because they want God and they want to know God better. And it was an immediate connection with about 200 people. People at CBC are interested in you and interested in knowing each student um, and really go out of their way to meet and fellowship with all the different students. And they don't classify your age, but they'll just, they want to fellowship with everybody. Students who cannot attend morning classes can enroll in night school. Night school offers first year curriculum and maximum flexibility with full and part-time options. It's straight teaching, it's power packed, it's um, an opportunity to know the, the instructors. You actually have a little bit more um, access to the instructors because it's a smaller group. No matter how you choose to attend CBC, your experience will be unforgettable. CBC students find many practical ways to test what they're learning through personal friendships, volunteer work, or in CBC interaction groups, they put the Word of God into action in real life situations. As they step out in faith, the Holy Spirit helps them discover their particular calling. Changing the way the body of Christ relates to God is a vision that will be achieved effortlessly through the lives of these CBC world changers.